next session on learn before you solve in the first part of the video we understood about the general structure of dynamic cmos design and its basic working principle in this video we will understand how to implement the function f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar using dynamic cmos design to implement the given function using dynamic cmos design first let us recollect the general structure of dynamic cmos design and then we'll proceed for the given logic so initially we had the precharged transistor which was denoted by em suffix p which is going to be a pmos transistor and then we had an evaluation transistor which was denoted as em suffix e and this would be a nmos transistor and then we will have in between these precharge and evaluation phase we will have a pdn logic and this will be again implemented using n the other important point is in a dynamic logic all the signal values are going to be stored in a capacitor so we will have an output capacitance capacitor which is denoted by cl is a load capacitor and this dynamic logic operates in two phases one is precharge phase and evaluation phase so for that these two phases are going to be controlled by the clock signal which is denoted by clk so these are the prerequisite for understanding the dynamic cmos design to implement the pdn logic for f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar for dynamic cmos design also we are going to implement only the pull down logic so we are not bothered about the pull up uh, network so if you are going to do the pull up network only we will have to go for applying de morgan's law and all other stuffs so here we will be doing just the calculation of fn where fn is obtained by recollecting the static cmos design principle wherein we will just take a complement of the given function so that we can get the nmos pull down network so this expression is going to denote you the pull down network now implementing this pull down logic we have two rules this is plus which is going to denote as sum will be in terms of parallel connection of transistors and this dot is representing the multiplication so if it is multiplication then the transistors will be connected in terms of series so now we'll proceed so it is going to be a all are going to be nmos transistors so it is a b dot c so b dot c is going to be anyway in series Since we have a plus b dot c, we are going to connect it in parallel. So let us extend this line also to connect in parallel. And now we will have a precharge transistor and an evaluation transistor. So that we'll have to set up. So here we will have precharge transistor, which is denoted in terms of uh, PMOS, and we have an evaluation transistor which is denoted by nmos so nmos will be grounded and the pmos source will be connected to vdd and the output will be taken at this point which is going to be f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar and we'll have to connect it using this will be your cl because it is a dynamic cmos design all the outputs are going to be stored in this output capacitance cl now let us check whether the implemented dynamic cmos design works perfectly for f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar with some specific values for the first case let us consider a equal to 0 b equal to 0 and c equal to 0 so if a b and c are 0 and let us also assume that clock is equal to 0 
if clock is equal to 0 then PMOS transistor will turn on therefore the pre-charge transistor is on and since clock is 0 my evaluation transistor will be in off condition. As the PMOS pre-charge transistor is on it pulls the output node to it pulls the output node to VDD and this VDD is completely stored in this load capacitor CL. So therefore now CL will be pre-charged to VDD. In this stage the NMOS transistor that the evaluation transistor is completely in off condition so that the pull down path is completely disabled and here also we can see that A is 0, B is 0 and C is 0. So if all these things are 0 it is going to remain disabled and for clock 0 definitely we cannot come here for the evaluation phase. Evaluation phase will turn on only when the clock is 1. So therefore at this stage we cannot substitute and find out what is the output f equal to uh, either it is going to be 1 or 0 in the pre-charge phase. Now let clock equal to 1. So therefore my evaluation transistor NMOS will turn on and PMOS which is the pre-charge transistor will not turn on for a high input so therefore that will remain as in off condition. So this is in off condition now let us uh, find out what are the values for A, B and C all these are going to remain as 0. Again all these are 3 NMOS pass transistors these 3 NMOS pass transistors will turn on only for a high input since 0 is a low input all these 3 NMOS pass transistors will remain in off condition. So therefore the evaluation path has not enabled the evaluation transistor has not enabled this calculation. So by calculating this you will not will not be able to attain any result because all these transistors are in off condition therefore my VCL will retain its already stored pre-charged value to VDD. If we substitute the values for A, B and C also we can see that it is going to be whole bar so obviously for all these things are going to be 0 the complement of 0 will remain as 1 so the equivalent of 1 is almost the VDD higher supply voltage. Now we will proceed for the second case wherein here we are going to consider different values where A is going to be 0, B will remain as 1 and C will be equal to 0. Now again considering clock equal to 0 what will happen? My VCL will be in VDD it will have a pre-charged value. At this stage the evaluation transistor ME will remain off so therefore evaluation and the substitution of all these values cannot be done and the output capacitance will store the pre-charged value VDD. Now substituting clock equal to 1 it will enter into the evaluation phase so now we can substitute the inputs A equal to 0 here B is 1 and C is 0. We can see here this NMOS pass transistor will be in off condition because it is not going to turn on for low input and here clock is 1 so therefore this will be this transistor will be in on condition this is 0 so therefore this PMOS transistor will be in off and here this uh, NMOS transistor will also again in off condition this 1 this is 1 so therefore this will be in on condition now look at here the connection is in parallel this fan either A and B dot C are in parallel so therefore even if any one path is on we can say that the output can be discharged to ground but here we can see that B and C are seriously connected since they are seriously connected both has to be in on condition but here we can see that it is one is in on and the other one is in off condition so therefore this series path is also disable this path is also disable so even though we have substituted the inputs and the club evaluation transistor is also 1 we cannot obtain CL to 0 because only if all these path if this path is on only if the speed in logic is on this ME transistor will try to pull down the output to 0 but here the speed in logic is completely disabled here so this speed in path is disabled we cannot 
evaluate. So, the evaluation goes wrong since they are in off condition and here one transistor is in off condition. So, therefore, this series path also does not work. So, therefore, it is completely disabled then the VCL will try to store the precharged previously stored value VDD. So, now we can even substitute the values for and see the logical expression output. So, 0 plus 1 dot 0. So, that is also going to be 1. So, f is equal to 1 which is equivalent to VDD higher value. So, here also we can say that the implementation is completely correct for the given logic. Now, let us see one more case inputs with A, B and C with different values such that the input values are going to create a low resistance path between the output and the ground value. So, it has to pull down the precharged value to ground. So, such values we are going to take it for our consideration. So, here I am going to consider for case 3. So, one such combination is A equal to 1 and B equal to 0 and my C will remain to 1. So, this is the case that we are going to consider. Now, again we will substitute as usual clock will be 0 initially and therefore, my MP transistor will be in on condition, ME will remain, evaluation transistor will remain in off condition. So, complete the, the PDN path will be disabled. The NMOS transistor at the bottom will ensure that no static power is consumed at this pre to period. So, that is the biggest advantage. The inputs to the gate can therefore make at least only one transition during evaluation. So, once the clock is 0, this evaluation phase will not work. So, therefore, my VCL will be again pre-charged to, to VDD. So, this value will would have come here. Okay, So, this is nothing but pre-charged value VDD. Now, we will go for the next case where we will consider clock equal to 1. Now, the evaluation transistor is in on condition. Now, let us substitute the values for A, B and C. So, here at this stage clock is 1. So, therefore, this PMOS transistor will be in off. Clock is 1. In my evaluation transistor goes on. A is 1. So, therefore, this NMOS will turn on for high input. B is 0. This will be in off condition. And C is 1. This will be in on condition. Now, here we can see that. First, let us look into the series connection. This series connection we can see that this is in off condition, this is in on condition. For series connection, both the transistors has to be in on condition. So, here one is off and the other one is on. So, therefore, this path does not work. But here, if we can look at this A, this transistor is in on. So, therefore, this path is on. Here, we can see that A and B dot C are parallel to each other. So, for parallel connection, even if any one path is enabled, so that is enough for us. So, here this uh, A path is enabled. So, therefore, we can see the connection like this. Now, the precharged value which is uh, VDD will be pulled down to 0. So, therefore, the low resistance path is existing between this out and the ground. So, therefore, the evaluation transistor is trying to bring down the output value previously stored value to 0. So, now the output here that will be stored here will be 0. So, now f is f should be 0. Now, let us substitute the values for f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar and check whether we are obtaining f equal to 0. So, vcl will be equal to 0 here. So, it is 1 plus 1 dot 0 is 0. So, complement of 1 will be 0. Therefore, we have obtained the correct value. So, with this we can conclude that the design we have implemented is correct for the given logic f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar. So, this is how we can confirm whether we have implemented the logic correctly. So, this applies for any logic even we can solve and apply for static CMOS design and check whether we have applied or implemented the logic correctly. Now, the main objective is to calculate the number of transistors required for implementing the given logic using dynamic CMOS design. So, if we are calculating the number of transistors required, 
then we can see that the total number of transistors required is for implementing the pull down logic we require three transistors so therefore three plus two transistors one is for the pre-charge transistor and the other one is your evaluation transistor so always it is in general for dynamic CMOS design for implementing a logic in dynamic CMOS design the number of transistors required will be n plus 2 amount of transistors so here in this case for this particular expression we require 5 transistors whereas in static CMOS design we required 2 n amount of transistors which was 6 transistors we required for implementing f equal to a plus b dot c the whole bar so here by using dynamic CMOS design we have reduced actually the number of transistors required for implementing the given logic hence to summarize the properties of dynamic CMOS design we know that the PDN logic is similar to that of the static CMOS implementation so uh, the NMOS PDN network is going to be similar to the static CMOS PDN implementation. So, there is no change in that. But we change in the PMOS network. The pull up network is not completely implemented. Instead of that pull up network, we have two extra transistors. So, therefore, we require n plus 2. So, if the given logic is a 3 input logic, then we require n amount of transistors plus 2 log transistors where these two transistors are required for implementing the pre-charge phase and the evaluation phase of the dynamic CMOS design. So that is the biggest advantage of dynamic CMOS design. Only because of that the inputs to the gate are able to make only one transition during the evaluation phase and therefore the number of transistors required will be always less when compared to the static CMOS design. Also, we can see that there is no static current path between VDD. So, here we had our VDD and then we had our pre-charge transistor and then we had the pull down logic. So, from here both the drains will be connected and output will be taken here and the output is stored in CL and then we had the evaluation transistor and then there is a ground. So, here this is the dynamic CMOS design. So here we don't have any straight connection between this VDD and ground because both these pre-charge and evaluation transistors they are controlled by the clock signal. If clock is zero this pre-charge phase will turn on and the output uh, path will exist between VDD and out and if clock is equal to one the output path will exist this phase will be cut off and the output path will exist only between output and ground so either you will have connection between vdd to output or you will have connection between ground to output but no straight connection will happen between vdd and ground so therefore we call this as no static current path exists between vdd and ground also because of less number of transistors required the switching speeds will be very faster so this kind of dynamic cmos design can be very much helpful in high speed CMOS circuits. One major problem in the design of dynamic circuits is in the direct cascading of dynamic circuits. Direct cascading of dynamic gates fails and the cascaded circuit does not work due to local glitch issues. Glitch usually refers to a sudden malfunction or a fault in the circuit. Hence, Domino logic is the proper solution to the cascading problem in dynamic CMOS design. To understand the cascading problem in dynamic CMOS design and the need for Domino logic will be explained in the next video session. Until then, stay safe. Thank you all for watching the video through Electronics Insight channel.